Let's move on to some social media questions. Jacob from Instagram has an interesting mathematical equation for us. I did the math. And I have 41 pairs of socks, 17 pairs of underwear, 93 shirts, 38 pairs of pants, 17 jackets, and 19 pairs of shoes. I know I need to get rid of some stuff, but I'm so overwhelmed, I don't even know where to start. Help. That seems to be a theme with this episode, this Mm. sense of overwhelm. But I think that is a, a theme of decluttering or letting go in general. Letting go is overwhelming. And it's the fear of letting go that is actually the fuel of clinging. I don't think mathematically there's anything wrong. I don't own that many pairs of underwear or that many, certainly not that many pairs of socks or 93 shirts. I used to own more than 93 shirts. At one point I had 70 dress shirts, TK. What the hell am I gonna do with 70 dress shirts? (laughs) Wear a different one every week. Uh, Well, I mean, (laughs) wait a minute. (laughs) Yeah, that math doesn't check out. I mean, for a year and a half. The point was, I would go a really long time without going to the dry cleaner to get the things clean. But then I'd have to just take a truckload, literally, of shirts to the dry cleaner because I had enough. And so in a weird way, having fewer clothes forced me into this beautiful limitation of, I need to do the laundry once a week. Otherwise, I can keep letting it pile up and pile up. And that also becomes overwhelming. So the first thing I look at is, where else am I overwhelmed in my life? Because you might be overwhelmed by the stuff, but maybe you're also overwhelmed by taking care of the stuff and cleaning the stuff and replacing the stuff and worrying about the stuff. You know, 38 pairs of pants, it's a lot of pants. And I don't have a fundamental problem with it. It, What's 19 pairs of shoes? I have a lot of friends who have more than 19 pairs of shoes. For me, it seems wild and it seems excessive for me. You can determine whether or not it's excessive for you. Now, 17 jackets, that sounds like my dream. I love <laughs> this my man jackets. Loves jackets. Yeah, yeah. We say we say <laughs> love people and jackets. I believe is the uh, is the correct slogan here. No, I mean I I probably have five or six jackets at this point. So maybe I'm not a good minimalist. I'm not the best person to answer this question. But what I've realized is it's not about the number of things. It's interesting that you're counting the things and that can give you a perspective. But I realized early on when I first started embracing minimalism. It was not about counting my things. I was never going to win that game. I had one friend who owned 52 items, and then someone else posted their list of 45 items, and they must be seven items better than that friend. And then this one woman, Nina Yao, she got down to 15 items. And I was like, oh, she must have won the game. And then I realized, like, well, no, maybe it's the guy who is naked in the middle of the street screaming at traffic. He won the game because he has literally zero possessions, including clothing. And so it's not about winning a game here. The question with my material possessions is, does this serve a purpose in my life or does it get in the way? Yeah. And here's the truth. And here's why it's so difficult with clothing, because it's both. These things serve a purpose for you. And many of these things are probably all of them you wear at least once a year Mm. or once a quarter. First thing I'll tell you, I would download the free minimalist rule book, 16 rules for living with less, theminimalists.com slash rule book. And in there, one of the rules is what we call the seasonality rule or Mm. the 90-90 rule. You can take any piece of clothing and you say, have I worn this in the last 90 days? If so, great. I'm probably going to keep wearing it. If not, Am I going to wear it in the next 90 days? And if the answer is still no, well, wait a minute. Why am I still holding on to it then? And maybe 90 days is too restrictive for you. You can make it one year. Have I worn this in the last six months? Yeah. Am I going to wear it in the next six months? That means a full year, all the seasons I went through, and I still didn't wear that jacket, that sweater, those socks, that shirt. But some of those things you really enjoy. Here's the paradox of minimalism for me. I get way more value from the clothes I have now because they're all my favorite clothes. I got rid of all of my clothes that weren't my favorite clothes. So all of my shirts are my favorite shirts. All of my jeans are my, I have two pairs of jeans. They're my favorite jeans. I have a few pairs of socks. They're all basic black socks. My shoes are my favorite shoes. And I get compliments about the clothes I wear all the time because I'm not wearing anything that isn't my favorite. If something ceases to be my favorite, well, I give myself permission to let it go. That's right. You know, the the courage to do the things that we already know how to do often produces the clarity for the things we don't yet know. 
I'm not going to take this first step because I don't know what the second, third, fourth, and fifth step is. And taking one step isn't really impressive to me. I need to know what the first 10 steps are and then I'll get moving. But you can't really know what the first 10 steps are until you put yourself in the unique position that comes from taking that first step. And that first step changes your vantage point and it gives you access to new information and you know how to take that second, third one and so on. And when it comes to decluttering, what I want to zoom in on is, Jacob, you said, I know I need to get rid of some stuff. And it sounds like after tallying it all up, you say, all right, there are a few things that are obvious. And that's not worth talking about, right? Because who wants to talk about the obvious? The obvious stuff is so easy that it's boring to talk about. Let's get some answers on the hard stuff. What about the stuff that I don't know about? Well, that's not the way to start. Let's start with the obvious stuff. Because we can bring those numbers down pretty easily if we just start with the things that we know we need to get rid of. What kind of state of consciousness does that put you in? And so one thing I'd recommend is parceling them out. Great job at counting them because by counting them, you quantify them. By quantifying them, you make them finite and you rescue them from this image in your head of just this nebulous blob of stuff I gotta get rid of. And so now take one of those piles Maybe work with the smallest one, the 17 jackets, and say, I don't need to get rid of 10 right now. Let's just get rid of one. Because if I can get rid of one, that's progress, right? And then you can say, I'll move on to the next pile. 19, 19 pairs of shoes. Let's just get rid of one. And you can make a game out of jumping from one pile to the next saying, I'm just going to get rid of one thing. And you know what you could do? You can even make this, take it slow, a weekly game. If I can make it through each one of these piles and get rid, of, get rid of one item, I've done it for the week. That's a big accomplishment. Let's see how it feels to enjoy this lighter load and this accomplishment. Next week, I'll come back and challenge myself to do the same thing. And you'll find that as you let things go one by one, your clarity will begin to grow exponentially. I like this as an idea. We were talking about this earlier in the episode, but you can do your own packing party for your stuff. And that's essentially what, if if you heard of Project 333, our friend Courtney Carver, she wrote a great book about this. Sean, let's put a link to that in the show notes. But basically, the best dressed people at all of our live tour stops are always doing Project 333. Mm. It's real simple. Here's how it works. Basically, you take all of your clothes, you do a little packing party for all of them, you box them all up, basically, and get them out of sight, except for 33 items. And that includes everything from pants and shirts and socks and underwear and jackets and shoes. And you have 33 items you're going to wear for three months, Project 333, three months, 33 items. Well, what does that force you to do? It forces you to pick the things you really enjoy wearing the things that look good on you, that are flattering. Also, though, the things that are versatile and useful because I can't have a bunch of things that I'm only going to wear once in a three-month period there. And what you realize is that limitation that you create, it creates this beautiful sort of creativity. And the people who show up at our events, they look so artistic and creative, not because they have the best clothes, but because they've gotten rid of the excess clothes that didn't make them feel the way that these 33 pieces of clothing feel. Last thing I'll say is 30-day minimalism game. It's a brand new month right now. You can play the 30-day minimalism game, but just with your clothes. I don't care if you don't make it to the end of the month. That is okay. But it gives you that momentum to let go. You, as TK Illuminated, you have some shirts you know you want to get rid of. Day one, it's one shirt. Day two, it's two pairs of pants. Day three, it's three jackets. And you keep going. It's like the 12 days of Christmas, but you're letting go of the things that are in the way. I hope you enjoyed that highlight from the Minimalist Private Podcast. If you'd like another highlight, check out this video. If you'd like to watch the Minimal episode, check out this video. Or if you'd like to dive deep into full episodes of the Minimalist Private Podcast, head on over to Patreon. The link is in the description. Your support keeps our podcast and YouTube channel 100% advertisement free. 